Now, do you have any questions or comments about anything you've read in the book or any of the tracks or how you use a specific track or anything like that? Um, if I'm not working on the skill building, I'll listen to like, especially the first couple, I think it's the first few tracks where there's just a group of people. Demonstrations. Talking. Yeah, demonstrations. And I will we'll just, you know, meditate to that. And it just brings you into a space. Um, and tone along with it. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I just want to listen though, <laughs> but you know, um, I love how you go through the benefits of toning in the book and also different ways that toning can be used um, that maybe some other people might not think of, you know, like on a hike or, you know, just out in nature um, and to pair it along with other modalities such as Reiki um, or other energy work modalities. You know, I think it, it just pairs beautifully with. You know, different people want different things for this. And I spend a lot of time singing by myself out in nature. And so I'm glad you brought that up. Somebody, so. I think you heard my YouTube on how we use this as wordless prayer. Did yes. you see that video? Yes. So does this kind of work with the people you're working with or? Yes, it does. And I actually will be um, toning for a prayer, for an opening prayer and a closing prayer at a Reiki circle for breast cancer survivors next week, as a matter of fact. You'll be the opening and the closing. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Perfect. Just you or will you get them to tone with you? I'm gonna feel them out and see what they're comfortable with. But well, as, I think as it stands at the moment, it will just be an opening prayer and you know, just introduce them to the, the aspect of toning, you know, and um, open Good for you. Door. I hope you let me know how you feel about it and how it goes. Absolutely. You know, most people, if they're around Reiki or yoga or body work or spirituality, you know, they can get on top of this toning if there's one or two people there, like you, who just break the ice and start oohs and ahs and, you know, spontaneous melodies. And then if there's a group, how many will be there? I'm not completely sure what the total count is at the moment, but I'm thinking probably around, probably from eight to 10, but I could be wrong. It could, it well, could that's be more. great. Because yeah. then people feel like they're in a little cocoon of sound and yeah. they don't have to be on stage and they'll, ooh, ah, ooh, you know, and in their own kind of private feeling and, um, it's amazing that people will do it. And uh, what is amazing to me is the good vibe that happens, even when it doesn't really sound like what we would hear in a recording or on a stage. It's just, just good vibes, you know, because we get out of our mental chatter. And I'm just excited that this and Reiki are perfect together. Perfect. Yeah. The idea of not really having to control anything and just let energy flow is pretty much, I think, the prayerfulness of this. I don't see it as religion in any way. When we think the word prayer, we think of religion. But to me, it's just a blessing. Right. And uh, we can do this with melody and harmony and goodwill. And that's all we need. Absolutely. It's an intention, connection you know, communion with a group of people. So now, did you tell me recently you had, you were under the weather and I said something about play some music on your speakers and get the speakers or headphones or where, what did you do and what kind of music did you listen to? I put, I listened to the tracks and I okay. had I have this huge speaker that's on wheels and I just linked up to that, you know, through my Bluetooth. And, um, and I just, I just sat and received that and received those tones. And, you know, you do feel it. You do feel a difference in your body. If you are mindful and you're, you know, eventually that mind chatter does go away and you can feel it. And I remember um, speaking with you and having a session with you you know, right after my, or yeah, I think it was right after my surgery, I had surgery 
over the summer. And, you know, you had done this practice with me of sensation and finding that within my body and listening to the tone and create, you know, feeling the sensation from it. And it, it was a, an amazing practice and it, it really helped me. Um, you know, so I was wondering a little bit about like how you came up, how that came about and where now, you're talking about the, could you feel sensation shapes yes that's what it was this this you know sensation okay i feel my body buzzing from the music right yes. mm -hmm. and different tones make different parts of the body light up and i call that resonation and then sensation that resonation is a sensation but and to 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 get clear with terms resonation i use that to kind of name this art of feeling the music vibrate your body and then sensation done in silence is the sensitivity that i first learned in yoga classes where we learn to feel tension or pain in the body so to answer your question i first learned this in really good yoga classes where it wasn't all about stretching. It wasn't all about getting tied up in a pretzel necessarily. It was very kind of soft, hatha yoga. And we would spend long periods of time on our back in the, in the corpse pose, really not taking a nap, but feeling sensation. And if you felt like, you know, pain from a headache or from an injury, and then paying attention to that sensation, is a healing skill but then we add it to music and now you're feeling resonation to kind of like light your body up and, and wake it up so that you can then feel the sensation so in a lot of our body work sessions where we we take turns the person's on a table we may or may not even touch them uh, but we practice in silence and in sound feeling resonation and then in silence, sensation. And it, it's a, it helps your body heal. Yes, that is what you had done with me. And that, that was great. And you did it on your own with, this, with the tracks? Yes. It's not quite the same, but it can work. And it's good practice so that when you do get the chance to have someone sing live for you, you've got those skills. And I liked earlier, you said skill builder. And I like that. That shows me you've been reading the book because these yeah. are skills. We have to develop them and explore them. And then we have lots of different tools to draw upon. Absolutely, and I love that too. You know, you, you refer to them as the, you know, it's like your toolbox almost. And during practice time, we're, we're you know, honing in on the, the specific skills and then when it comes time to practice and tone with a group or tone for a person, you know, we're taking those and we're putting together this beautiful painting, as you like to say, you know, you've compared oh, yes. to art or, you know. It becomes practice. very visual, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Anybody can find my book or any of these YouTubes uh, via my website, vocaltoning.net. And that's the best place to go. Or just look it up on YouTube, George Grant, Vocal Toning. You'll find lots of YouTubes there. And thank you, Nicole, for this, making this discussion fun today. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh.